right, nine millimeter versus 357 Magnum and short barrels. And what I have today, I have this 357 Magnum tactical short barrel, lower recoil, low flash, 140 grain. I tested this and the four inch barrel and ever since then everybody's saying, hey, test it in a snub nose. So that's definitely what I'm gonna do today. And I thought, why not get something really close to nine millimeter that's gonna have kind of the same properties. Now, nine millimeter is typically not listed as a short barrel in most companies, sometimes it is. But the reason why, because it, it's because it already is kind of a good short, short barrel load. So they don't necessarily always list it that way. And what we have is the 147 grain jacket at hollow point. And it is listed as a standard pressure low flash. So it's kind of the same thing here, low flash. 147 grain, 140 grain. Barrel travel on both of these is almost identical, so it should be a really fair test uh, between the two of these. We're gonna go through the chronograph, see what kind of velocity and accuracy we get at the same time. Then we're gonna go through 10% clear ballistics, but we're gonna do three inches of it. And then we're gonna do one quarter inch medium density fiber board to represent a rib or a sternum hit and into more clear ballistics. And then after we do that, we'll pull this out and we'll do the same type of thing without the medium density fiber board and see how those bullets continue to compare to each other. And then I'm gonna shoot from 25 yards at my full size ISPC steel sil silhouette and just see what kind of practical accuracy they get. So let's get started with the test. All right, first up we have the nine millimeter rated at 1000 feet per second. I don't know the barrel length that they list that from, but we'll see what we get from our 3.2 inch Taurus G2C. Nine sixty one, pretty good. Nine sixty four, that was a weird impact. Nine seventy nine, nine eighty nine, nine eighty three. Very consistent, but those look like they're tumbling on paper. That is just interesting. Let's see how that three fifty seven mag compares. All right, 357 mag rated at 1150 feet per second from a stub nose revolver. A couple things here. I'm only going to do three shots because I only have a few rounds of these. And I am going to fire single action just because the way this gun fits my hand, I overcompensate trying to hold it. And it just does all kinds of weird things on paper, which is fine normally, but not so much for when you got a chronograph that's a few inches above where you're shooting. So let's see what this will do. Of course, we get to 1150. 983. I don't think that's reading. I'm going to back it up just a little bit. 983. I will do one more uh, because I need to save these rounds, but let's see what we get. It's not reading at all. Um, but I can guarantee that this is going to be what Buffalo Boar says it is because they're always spot on on my testing, especially stuff like this. Don't know why that round won't read, but the 9mm reg is fine. That's quite interesting. The only thing that would cause something like that, it's, it's an effect that I really don't have any control over other than if I went back to about 15 yards because there's smoke coming out and it's kind of obscuring that and there's nothing that you can do other than do that and with the round i'm already you know saying i'm i'm afraid i might hit something um yeah i'm not going to try that so let's hit our ballistic gel block and see how these two compare to each other all right first up we have our nine millimeter with that medium density fiber board let's see how this does So that's very interesting here. Um, I honestly don't see any expansion at all. However, we're about 12 and a quarter. That's only 14 and a quarter. If we weren't talking this, typically it doesn't always play out that way. So we'll pull this out. Wow, see exactly what we were seeing. I thought I saw on paper. Too short of a barrel for that. That's tumbling. So let's pull this out, let's clean this up. We'll do it without the fiber board. We'll hit it, you know, up here. And we'll see side by side how it does without the fiber board. 
All right, no medium density fiber board. We'll see how this, this tumbling bullet does without it. See, that totally is off from the no normal typical equation. Um, and that's because it's tumbling. So probably the reason why this is like this is because it hit the fiberboard sideways. If it had hit it more straight on, it'd probably be closer up here. And we probably hit this more straight on because we see more damage up here. It's an interesting thing to say the least, but if we take this at face value, I know we're at 17 inches, 17 and a quarter, something like that. Very interesting. Uh, let's pull out that 357, see how that does. All right, 357 mag through the medium density fiber ward. We'll see what this does. So we can see where it impacted. There's there's a huge difference here. Um, impacted an exit. This is interesting. You know, I had it flipped over, so this is the impact with the 9mm in the exit. So we definitely see expansion with that 357. And what we're seeing here is our damage path is right at 18. So that's 20 inches, typically. So if that equation's right, it's not always. We'll probably be up here. But let's try it. All right, no medium density fiber bore. Let's see what we get here. That is weird. That is real, real weird. Um, difference or less penetration. That's not typical at all. Which means that this is going to, the one without the medium density fiber board probably expanded more. Which is opposite of the typical that we see. Opposite. Um, so... What I'm going to do now is because of these bullets tumbling, rather than shoot from 25 yards, I'm going to go back to the ridiculous distance of 75 yards because I want to see if I can hit that target at all. Because even if they're tumbling, if I can hit the target at that distance, they're kind of okay. So let me see what they'll do from 75 yards. So we're back from 75 yards. I only have two rounds of the 357 left, so... I don't really expect to hit it with this, but I'll at least try. I love that. All right, now on to the nine millimeter. Um, We'll see if that tumbling is really going to make an, an effect on this. I had trouble shooting from this distance with this pistol before, even with better ammo. So we'll see what we get anyways. So I'm going to say it did affect it because it wasn't just me there. Um, I was aiming relatively at the same spot and I actually saw a bullet hit about low left, about eight feet. And then I saw one hit high right about six feet, a 14 feet spread between the two. Now, you know, even 
if my accuracy wasn't that good today, I would definitely keep all those rounds within probably a five foot area, not a 14 foot spread. So obviously that tumbling is playing a part in this. And the few hits I had, one of them I was aiming dead on. And then several other ones I was aiming to the right about three feet to the right and a foot high. It was just very erratic, very erratic. So. 147 grain definitely not good for a short barrel pistol even though theoretically it's the best because you have the least amount of gunpowder at a very high pressure so theoretically it's the best but in practice it is not so that's what you get today with these rounds so as always comment share and like and thanks for watching